Uh, hello, hello everybody. Welcome to uh, the first online edition of uh, Talk CSS Forty Seven. This is gonna be very awkward because it's just me, Sheldon, and Michael talking to each other. Uh, be- and we can also see that there's no one else in the call except Zion. So hi, Zion. Today, Talk CSS is for you. So anyway, uh, long time no see. Uh, and anyway, actually, I just saw you in uh, in January. But anyway, this is us. You you also know us, uh, So actually, also don't don't even say lah. Uh, uh, this also can skip lah. You already heard this 1,000 times for four years, Lee. Don't need to shout out. Don't need blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, host of the month is no longer GovTech. Oops. Moving on with life. Okay, let's move straight to CSS color of the month. This month's CSS color of the month is pale turquoise. Why? Because I felt like it. Uh, so the new the new thing about CSS color of the month is I now will uh, share trivia about the color. So turquoise is a blue green color based on a gem of the same name. I got read Wikipedia. Okay, the word comes from the French word for Turkish because the gemstone came from Turkey. Today you learn. First recorded use of turquoise as a color name in English was 1573, but first appearance as a CSS name color was on 26 October 1989. Some of you don't even know how to walk yet when it was added to the X11 colors database. I got the git. I got the like git commit link if you are interested. Moving on is uh oh yeah we must do this uh HTML news of the month first agenda okay github.com slash Singapore CSS <laughs> lol uh la 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 la. La 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 la. Okay, uh, it is February. Uh, it is February 5th. And uh, Chinese New Year just passed. So uh, nothing very exciting happening. Uh, there's a new browser. It is not open source, but it's a completely new engine. Uh, it's called Flow. Uh, you cannot download it either because they are not ready. Uh, it's not open source because there's no corporate backing. But it is a completely new e- engine, no relation to WebKit, Gecko, or Blink. Uh, so if you go to uh, the GitHub notes, you can click this and uh, go to their like uh, website. And uh, this is an interview with the founder of uh, EQ, who is the company that built this uh, new browser. Considering the fact that we don't have uh, we, are, we lost an engine, mm. uh, I think it's good that we have another engine. Even though it's not open source, at least it exists. Who knows, it might get like VC backing and then uh, eventually it becomes a thing. Because it was built, they, this company does like set-top box UI, UI and like basically non-typical uh, browser thing, but they still need a rendering engine, so they built one, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the interview is pretty interesting, you can go and uh, like read about it. Um, what is new in DevTools uh, Chrome Chrome Hall, I think uh, they are the developer advocate team also very busy, yeah. Cause they got what's new in Chrome 79, then they don't have what's new in Chrome 80. But they got released video, never released blog post. I also don't understand why. Anyway, the only thing new in DevTools 81, if you use like Canary, is uh, there's Moto G4 support in device mode, which is great because I have a Moto G4. And uh, if you hover over CSS content properties, you can see unescaped values. Uh, if you're interested, you can just click on the link and then go and see their uh, blog post. And so Safari Technology Preview, right, they release every two weeks one. So if we do this every month, it's going to have two two updates. Uh, so the interesting thing about um, the updates for CSS is that there's uh, support for image set syntax. And uh, image set is a CSS function notation. It lets the browser pick the most appropriate CSS image from a given set. This is very new. It's in CSS images module level 4. So it's like editor's draft uh, very early. Um, but if you download Safari Technology Preview, you can actually try it out, which is kind of interesting. There's also a CSS Highlight API. Uh, this one I also never heard before until like now. Uh, so apparently in uh, pseudo elements level 4, right, there is proposed highlight pseudo element. So Basically, you go and highlight the text, then they let you customize law, and and then I think s- they branch out from there. There's custom highlight API module level one, so there's gonna be pseudo elements for like selection, inactive selection, spelling error, and grammar error. That's uh kind of interesting. And what else? What else? Moving on. Uh, okay, here. Image element. Image element, other than alt tag, which everybody only use alt tag and source, but image element got a lot of attributes also. So one of them is sizes. 
So sizes is actually a pretty stable attribute. Usually it's used for responsive images or you use picture element or whatever also can. Uh, clamp function I thought about it last month, you never come too bad. Uh, so on the specification side, right? Uh, it, everything is condensed into one line, which is first CSS working group face-to-face -face meeting in 2020. Uh, so they met like end of January in Spain at Igalia and they thought like a lot of things uh, because it's like face-to-face -face meeting. Uh, so one of the interesting, let's see, the, there are a couple of interesting things that are discussed because basically they just put a group of people together, lock, lock a group of people together in a room for three days and all they thought about is like issues. Uh, so there are a lot of interesting uh, topics that were covered, you know, like units and values, got alignment, scroll snap, background, cascade, blah 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 blah. So I'm just going to highlight my personal favorite since you're all not here, or only Zion's watching anyway, so never mind. Uh, so there's this uh, custom cascade origins uh, as a discussion. Uh, wait, let me show, let me find a Twitter trait. Twitter trait. Screen is being recorded, right? Uh, if not recorded, too bad. Fix it in post. Anyway, uh, yeah, so it says like, how will like a superpower bake into CSS where in the head you can say, hey, all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. Okay, read, don't tweet yourself. But um, the proposal is that they, they give you a means to say that this particular file everything in this file will beat everything in the other file. So the specificity, the specificity doesn't matter individually. Everything in file 1 will beat file 2. That's just an idea, it's a proposal, but it's actually an interesting uh, proposal that they are trying to get feedback on. So uh, it's on Twitter if you, you want to see the 40, the God knows how many uh, comments after it because everyone got an opinion. Uh, that was quite interesting. Uh, let's see what else, what else. Uh, uh, masonry layout as a property value. This is a very long GitHub issue. So, uh, also a very interesting issue. Uh, but like, I don't know, man. Like, should should it be its own thing? I don't know. Uh, the, I mean, this guy, he is, I think he is in the working group one. So it's just like they are discussing this. Like, should you have grid masonry as a property uh, or do we want to develop the rest of the values in such a way that you can do masonry i don't know but it's a it's a very 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 detailed and thought out uh proposal already uh, i think it's based it's basically i think waiting for developer feedback like you me everybody else our feedback and also within the working group themselves, whether they can like resolve it. But this is something being looked at already. Uh, so that that's qu quite interesting. Uh, they discuss this. Uh, there's also drama over constructible style sheet. This is just Twitter drama. Lah, huh? Let's just, I'll just highlight it because, you know, nothing better to do. Uh, so uh, it, I think it has to do with web components, but like this guy is complaining about the fact that Adopted style sheets, Chromium going to implement, then like it's not standard, and then now uh, Chromium say that they cannot undo it or some shit like that. La. So, yeah, that's that's like Twitter drama. Never mind, uh, just putting it there because it had the word style sheets in it. Uh, and then they also discuss more like random things like if you use web fonts, then you use fallbacks, everyone use sans serif or serif, but you can also use cursive. And I think on certain OS, it'll give you comic sans or some whatever. Uh, so there's a discussion on what the cursive equivalent should be for Chinese because Chinese actually don't have cursive. Chinese also don't have italics. So the proposal was to use kai ti, but uh, I think that was discussed also. Uh, basically, that's it. Uh, here are the interesting links. Got lots of interesting links. Uh, we want to highlight cool code pens. We want to highlight this CSS grid cross stitch by our very own Olivia Ng, who is uh, currently this has come back to Malaysia in KL, but she never dialed in. I will, <laughs> I will nail her later. Uh, but yes, this is very cool. Uh, it's a CSS cross stitch by our own Olivia Ang, everybody. Uh, what else? Our Polaroid camera is CSS then Tokong. So we must also highlight this. I want that change view. Then cool, right? Uh, pure CSS, no JS, no JS, guys. Uh, and then also a single dish challenge from my favorite CSS person, uh, Yuan Chuan. Yes, you also like, very nice. Anyway, subscribe to the newsletter and you'll get all these links. LOL. 
Okay, now we will introduce our first speaker, who is uh, Mr. Sheldon oh. Chang, Hi. who is our inaugural, inaugural online speaker ever. Nobody else can be first, only Sheldon can be first because he can only be first once. So uh, Sheldon, you start sharing your screen, then I will start sharing my screen. Let's see how, see how Hangouts works. We all don't know how to use Hangouts, yo. Share 